Joining us today is Olaf Bönke. He heads the Berlin office of the European Council on Foreign Relations. Thank you very much for coming in. American farmers seem to be for this free trade agreement. German farmers seem to be dead set against it. Is that representative? Yeah, I think it is representative, but we have to be aware it's just a tiny picture uh, of the bigger one. So uh, agriculture and, and food safety issues are definitely the headlines in the newspapers these days, mm. uh, but it's uh, not really what TTIP is about. If the two sides are so far apart, as far as opinion goes on food, um, how are they going to be brought together? At some stage. Yeah, that's definitely one of the interesting questions. So I think it's uh, worth looking back. So uh, within the last 10 years, so the, the export of US agriculture products to Europe decreased immensely. So uh, we had a decrease of more than 50% if it comes to grains, poultry, for instance, more than 70% uh, less in exports from the US to Europe. Uh, so therefore, of course, for US farmers, this is a big incentive entering the European market or re entering so to say, uh, for European farmers who stepped in uh, meanwhile in the last 10 years. But why such a big dip over the past 10 years? Because the US um, neglected to, to sign a couple of agreements uh, if it comes to food safety standards in Europe and with the European Union to protect their own market and the Europeans developed this uh, tradition further and further. So now they want to enter the market because it's part of the bigger uh, trade agreement uh, and now actually of course uh, we have a big distinction. So uh, they want to come together, but at very different levels. Is this, though, about um, free trade or, or more about protectionism? I think it's still about free trade, uh, but of course it depends on your angle and your perspective. So. Um, uh, it was uh, up to now. It was not really about protectionism as such, so that. Uh, but it was as we said on the on the food safety issue. Mm -hmm. So standards developed because uh, European consumers, for instance, demanded to have higher standards if it comes to uh, food regulation. Um, so uh, there are different other um, uh, issues in this. But if we look at it from a global perspective, of course, from the outside, outside from Europe and the US, this looks pretty much that the two big markets are protecting and uh, isolating themselves from the rest. What are the other big issues? I suppose financial regulation would have to be one. Yeah, definitely financial regulations is one of the big issues. Services, for instance, make up more than 60% of uh, the trade between the US and Europe. Um, standards and production, of course. Uh, it's on the one hand about recognizing different standards. On the other hand, it's about harmonization. So these are two different issues, but they have a big impact, of course. We've also seen a report about uh, two families and, and what they think on both sides of the Atlantic. Is the general population actually for this, but it's interest groups that, that are holding back these talks? I think it's really hard to say because uh, the, the biggest challenge for the public opinion is that the lack of transparency within the negotiations. So there's hardly any uh, facts on the ground. So both governments uh, decided to, uh, to uh, keep this off the record. Uh, so therefore, there's a high interest in really facts about what is on stake at the moment. And I think uh, unless this uh, uh, box has been opened, so there's really hard to say what it is. But is that going to change or can it change or does it have to change? Of course, at some point they have to open this, but the question, of course, is how negotiable is the content yeah. we, we will be presented. So, and this is at the moment, so we are negotiating from the European side with Canada, the small or the older brother, so to say, to the TTIP negotiations should be signed in, in autumn this year. Uh, and lawmakers are really scared. So because they think, okay, it's either take it or leave it. Mm. Uh, there's not much room actually for maneuver. So do you see a deal by 2015? Hard to say. I think it will be a long, hard process of negotiation. So, but hopefully, I think it's still in the interest of both sides. And the whole time, the WTO, where does it stand? Is it being left out of this? Yeah, definitely. And of course, it's legal. So, uh, but of course, it was uh, first. It was defined as an exceptionism uh, uh, um, to have these kind of free trade agreements. Actually, of course, uh, multilateral uh, negotiations on the WTO level should be the norm. But at the moment, with this T actually would set world standards and then the rest has to follow. Mr. Bunker, thank you very much for the analysis. You're welcome.